Warning, this game is in early access. The information this video covers is subject to change and may not be accurate in subsequent versions. Hello everybody and welcome to Learning with Chrono, Space Engineers Edition. Today we will be covering the Rotor, a device in Space Engineers that allows the rotation of one part of the ship or station relative to the rest of the ship or station. If we open up our toolbar configuration by hitting G, we can see that the Rotor is four places down and three places from the right. As we can see on the left here, that it's not terribly expensive to build. On the large ship or the station, it requires only two computers, four motors, four large steel tubes, 10 construction components, and 15 steel plates. On a small ship, it requires one computer, one motor, one small steel tube, five construction components, and five steel plates. Placing the block is the same as any other part in Space Engineers. You select the number of the item on your hotbar, and you hover over where you want to place it. The object can be rotated according to the help function in the upper right hand corner of your screen. And as you can see, we can see the degrees on the rotor itself. We have zero up at the top and 270 on the left side. We can rotate that using the page up and the insert buttons or however it is on your screen at the time. And then we just left click to place. As we can see, there are two parts of the rotor. There's the rotor itself, and another piece that appears that doesn't show in the hint, the hidden rotor part. Now, if we weld one of these pieces together, it does not weld the other one. The other one has to be welded separately. Blocks can be attached to the end of the rotor, just like any other block inside of Space Engineers, but note, that the rotor itself is just a little bit larger than the normal size block. So any block that comes out will stick out from the other blocks behind it. This makes rotating the rotor slightly easier. Unlike most other machine blocks, the rotor doesn't have any direct way to access its interface. All functions must be accessed through another interface. For example, this gravity generator or a pilot's chair. The interface can be accessed via the K button on any console. We can see the rotor on the left here under control panel. If we click on it, we can see its separate sections of its interface. We have the basic on off. We have the name. We have the show on HUD if you have an antenna attached. We have the reverse button, which will take any velocity that's set and reverse it. We have torque and this is how fast it will get up to speed whatever the velocity is set we have the braking torque which is how quickly it will stop after the rotor is turned off we have the velocity which is how many rotations per minute the rotor will make the lower limit is actually the degrees of rotation it will go unlimited if you want it to keep spinning no matter what and then we can set it from negative 360 to whatever the upper limit is set to at the time. The upper limit is the opposite side, basically from unlimited to whatever the lower limit is set at the time. Torque is measured in Newton meters. We begin the whole way down at zero Newton meters and go the entire way up to 33.6 million Newton meters. This is based on mass, not on gravity. So the more you have attached to the spinning end of the rotor, the more power you need to spin it. The, same, the exact same thing can be said for the braking torque. We go the whole way from zero Newton meters entirely up to 33.6 million Newton meters. This is also based on mass, not on gravity. So the more mass you have, the more torque you need to stop it from spinning. Velocity is rated in rotations per minute. And we can see that we can have it spinning at 30 rotations per minute maximum. As we can see in the background, it's spinning. 
or we can have it spinning at negative 30 rotations per minute. As you can see in the background, it's spinning the other way. The positive side of rotations per minute is spinning clockwise, whereas the negative side of rotations per minute is spinning counterclockwise. There is a small bug that no matter what you do, no matter how finely you control the rotations per minute, after you set it, you cannot reach zero rotations per minute again unless you turn off the rotor. Upper limit and lower limit are based on the degrees of a circle. On the machine part of the rotor, we can see conveniently placed lines indicating where the degrees are. At the top here, we have zero, going the entire way around until we reach 315. Once we reach zero again, we are at also at 360 degrees. On the rotor part of the machine, we can see a white line indicating where the rotor is in the rotation. For example, right here, we are just above 315 degrees or just above negative 45 degrees. The lower limit and the upper limit are meant to limit how far the rotor can turn in certain situations. For example, if we wanted the rotor to only be able to turn 90 degrees clockwise, we would set the lower limit to zero and the upper limit to 90. Please note that these can be fine-tuned using the arrow keys on your keyboard. Now if we turn the rotor on and we set its RPM just a little bit higher so we can see it, we can see that the current angle is increasing. Also note that it went up to 91 degrees. The higher the velocity, the more it's going to be off. So if you want it exactly on, you got to make sure to keep the velocity relatively low. And if we look at the rotor itself, we can see that the white line on the rotor part is pointing at the 90 degree mark on the machine part. Unless otherwise specified, the rotor will continue to stay at 90 degrees. To change it back to zero, which is our lower limit, we can either manually drag the velocity down, and we can see that the current angle is going down, or we can leave the velocity up and hit the reverse button. The reverse button will automatically switch the velocity to the inverse of what it was. So right now it's negative 1.05 rotations per minute. If I hit reverse, it'll go to positive 1.05 rotations per minute. But if we let it at negative 1.05 rotations per minute down to its current angle of zero, we can see that the white line on the axle of the rotor is pointing at zero, but going no further. The white line will stay there unless otherwise specified. Now say that we only want the rotor to be able to turn 90 degrees counterclockwise. We can do that by setting the lower limit to negative 90 degrees and the upper limit to zero. Now, if we turn the rotor on, we can see that its current angle is negative. That means it's spinning counterclockwise. And we'll see that it will stop at negative 90 degrees. On the rotor itself, we can see that the line is pointing to 270 degrees instead of 90. That's because that the rotor spun from zero to 270 counterclockwise, negative 90 degrees. This will allow you to have machines that go from 0 to 270 easily without having to go the entire way around. The lower limit can go down to unlimited, allowing it to sp spin freely in a counterclockwise fashion. But its lower set limit only goes to 359 degrees. The same can be set with the upper limit, except it's positive 359 degrees. If it's set like this, the rotor will be allowed to rotate almost twice before stopping. Rotors, just like any other block with an interface, can be set into block groups, allowing you to access them both simultaneously to create interesting designs and useful situations. I hope this video was useful to you, and I would like to say, as always, keep playing the game and have fun.